Welcome. It is Thursday, and we are going to totally confuse y'all today. This has been a very different week. We had a little stand-in, a little stand-in, and a little stand-in, a little stand-in. Today, we're going to let Matt stand in for Bill and I. Matt's going to be here, but he's really not going to be here. I haven't seen him. Where's he at? He's, he's here. He's just in a little box. Oh. And today... I wasn't going to use it until closer to Easter, but all the way home, I kept thinking about how amazing it was to see this man stand on the mountain below the Bible and deliver a message. And I thought about y'all. You didn't get to hear him deliver a message this week because we know him being first cousins with Clark Griswold, he got lost in St. Louis. And he was lost for three hours. So he did not get here to do the show as scheduled. So. I just decided I can't hold it back. I'll tell you one thing about me that y'all don't know. Nobody knows this. I can't keep a secret. If I oh, have yes, something can. really good and I want you to see it, I just got to share it with you. So today I have got to share you the message that Brother Matt did at Fields of the Wood yesterday. It was incredible to pull up and look up at the top of the mountain and see all those smiling faces standing up there waiting on us. It was great. You shared it on Facebook enough. It was that. beautiful. Yeah, the Singletons um, took pictures. We had a lot of people with cameras, and I love that. And if you have photos of yesterday, please share them because the only photos I have, um, Ron has a really, really good one of Matt and I, and it would be really, really good, except my eyes are closed, and I look like I'm asleep. So... You probably I wasn't. Were. I wasn't. But it is, let me tell you how considerate. Now, y'all all know Freddie Brackett is just precious. Let me tell you what that sweet man did. He drove the motor home like this, just real easy around the curves and just real careful across the railroad tracks so Brother Matt could sleep on the way to North Carolina. Because Brother Matt had driven 16 hours and was dead dog tired. So on the way to the meeting on the mountain, Freddie just drove real easy. Now, if I'm back there in the bed, he's a slinging it and flying around curves. And I was going to say, the last time I was in there, he's slinging me all over the place. <laughs> I know it. It's because we're not preachers. We're not that's prima what donnas. That's what deal is. is. That's yeah. it. That's it. But Matt did get a little bit of sleep on the way up there, and then he got a little sleep on the way back. Brother Matt was whipped, but he delivered a message I could have held it. I could have put it in the safe deposit box. I could have waited until Easter, but I decided y'all deserve it. It is incredibly powerful. It is incredibly hopeful, and it was, it's weird because I was so panicking. Most of the time when you go outside to, to shoot anything, the sun is a problem. Yesterday, blue, blue skies with overcast. The sun did not come out until the camera was turned off. Yeah, good weather. So we had no shadows. It was absolutely incredible. The wind that was a really big concern last time we were up there, we were trying to film and trying to talk and the wind was driving us crazy. And you could hear the wind and everything. Today, I don't think you're going to hear the wind because it was like the skies were perfect. It was very calm. One time you see his Bible, the pages kind of flipping. But it was The Lord beautiful. was trying to give him a new scripture to read. Yes, what that was. maybe he was. Yeah. Maybe he was. But it is a powerful message, and he ends. And this is just like dead on perfect. And I, when we went to eat at the Yellow Jacket, I had my eye makeup all over my face because he did the song, We Shall See Jesus standing in front of the tomb. He was up on the mountain and the tomb was behind him. And if you think that won't wake you up and, and shake your socks. Did it, you have a spiritual fit? I did. And uh, it, it was incredible. It was, this is, this is just the most wonderful place for free to visit. Take your family and go up there and have a picnic. Take yourself and go up there and meditate. I mean, it is just a great place to go. And, and as spring approaches, there's nowhere any better. It's, it's just beautiful. You know, you've you've had, never been there. No, I haven't. I need to go. You know you've had a good uh, spiritual time in church when your makeup runs. Mm -hmm. well, my makeup was all over my did, face. Did you let your hair down? No, but it got blown just a little bit. But let me tell you all about something. Um, yesterday, somebody did ask me again what kind of makeup I wear. And, Sherry and, Stay. And he dubbed it Sherry Stay. It's really Elizabeth Arden. So with, with hard deck. 
Yeah, it's Elizabeth Arden, and I use the cream base, and then I use the powder on top of it. And for y'all who see me late at night, I started at 7 in the morning, and this makeup lasts all day long. So it is worth its weight and gold. I thought you had it on since last October 31st. Yeah, maybe so. But you can pick it up at several local drugstores. Who is that Elizabeth it, Arden lady, anyway? I don't know, but she does a good job. Is she an actress? Or she doesn't. I don't know. I don't know who she is. I don't know. But but she's done a good job on me for 40 years, and and I like her stuff. And every time I get out in the public, people ask, and it does cover up the scars I had from skin cancer, which is really cool. So who was popular in makeup before Elizabeth Arden? Um, I mean, you go, I used you go to wear way that back. old cheap cover girl. Yeah, when you go to high school, everybody wore that old stuff that smelled like Noxzema. Ooh, that stuff was rough. I thought it was called cornstarch. No, I think the reason people wore it is because your mama wanted you to wear it. Because if you was wearing that stuff and some boy leaned over to kiss you, you stunk so bad like Noxzema, he wasn't going to kiss you. I'll tell you what I've been so. wearing the last few days is skunk. There's been so many of them dead on the road. Oh, that's funny. Have you seen them? They're just all yes. over the place. Yes. It must uh -huh. be mating Why? season or something. I don't know. Mm. They're getting out trying to catch cars is what it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. Skunks. Well, we want you to catch a ride up to Fields of the Wood. Find somebody to go with you. Uh, or if you decide to just go up there by yourself, there's a picnic table up at the top of the, uh, the, top of the hill by the Bible. And um, just a very, very peaceful place. Now, the day it will not be peaceful is the week of Easter. Because the week of Easter, hundreds of Pilgrimage. people, yeah, hundreds of people will fill the place. Like Stone Mountain. Like Stone Mountain, except I think better because it's out in the country. Do you know if you went to Stone Mountain for Easter, do you know how many crazy people from Atlanta you would have to deal with on the roads? 285 to get to Stone Mountain is like nuts, so you don't want to do that. Now, I, I want to uh, explain this to people because we've talked about you used to have hair. Used to, yeah. I still have some. You was a kid. You was a kid right there. How old were you? I was you? 21. Oh, yeah. well, maybe not. Maybe you were approaching adulthood. Well, no, I just thought I'd show you the proof. Where you did have hair. I had Can some we weird clothes, too. Yeah. Yeah, he kind of looked like the, um, I don't know, exactly. Well, that's back in 1983. I, I don't know if they can see that or not, but that's... You uh, had hair. That's down in Myrtle Beach. South it looked Carolina. like he had a little blonde going on in it. I kind of looked like a beach bum, didn't I? Yeah, pretty much. Well, I, I guess I had, had a little blonde. rather now on. just a bum. Oh, no, I didn't say And then say uh, that. we had uh, some crazy clothes back in the 80s, too. I just want to show yes, them. Yes, the 80s the were a wild time of, of uh, yes. I had a red belt to go with it. Look at that. Oh, how funny. How <laughs> funny. And y'all, he was parting his hair in the middle, so he did have yeah. some hair. Uh, no, uh, Adam, cool. our director, loves that one. So. <laughs> that is too cool. You know, yesterday, or day before yesterday, I was trying to explain to my 15-year-old granddaughter what double knit was. And I was telling her about you doing the Travolta thing, you know. Yeah. And I said, that's when people wore double knit. And she said, what is double knit? And I said, well, it's kind of hard to describe, but if you put a match to it, it disintegrated. Kind of like polyester. Yeah. And Yeah, and it was, I guess, the, the, the synthetic fibers came about what year? Oh, uh, gosh, I don't know. Might have been I, before my time. I can I remember know. feeling them, and they, they didn't breathe. They I'll were tell you what, weird. that's one reason I don't have hair on my legs, because it rubbed the hair off my legs. Double knit. Yeah. <laughs> Polyester stuff, yeah. Now, y'all, we are not showing his legs. You I don't care what you women sitting out there think. We are not showing It works showing better than a wax job. If you want to do your legs, just wear some polyester, and it's gone. You're kidding. No. That is weird. That is weird. It works. Mm -mm -mm. Today is going to be a day. We are going to share... Uh, I was going to keep it, I was going to save it, I was going to use it later. And all the way down the mountain, I just kept thinking, I hope the footage turned out okay, I hope the sound is okay, I hope we didn't have any issues. Now, I will say, for you rude people who were wandering aimlessly through there, blowing your horn, that was not nice because we were taping an inspirational message. And, but guess what? Well, I said if you love Jesus, honk. Well, the honk good, if you love the, the good Lord. cameras that we used and the good mic did not pick up the thing. It just picked up Brother Matt, so it was perfect. So y'all out there blowing them horns, it didn't do any good. I know they were blowing horns to be friendly, but did they not realize when you see the big camera going on, that means, you know, shh. Well, I told you the guy in front of them had a bumper sticker that said honk if you honk love you Jesus. Love Jesus. Well, well, they did it. It was, uh, it was a wonderful day. Thank you to each and every person. I love meeting folks who watch us that I've never met, and I love seeing those who watch every day that I know. So can thank you so, so much. Can I put, the, can so, I put so these much. up now? Yeah, go ahead and put them up. We're not going to have a garden. Can we talk a little bit about gardening? You said this year you're having a garden. Yeah, and I think I won't be the only one either. Uh, and who's going to be hoeing and plowing? Me and mm -hmm. Melissa and my son. Okay, okay. Yeah, we're going to grow some sweet potatoes and some... Uh, 
probably some regular pota uh, russet potatoes. And Do you course, think uh, the price of carrots. groceries, more people will go yeah. back to gardening? Absolutely. I think so. Absolutely. I think so. Peppers, so I'd say peppers, hint yeah. milling, y'all better order some extra seeds because I say you'll be busy, busy, busy. And get those horses to doing their thing too because we need the manure. I, oh, oh, yuck. You know, I got to tell y'all this story. This is good because this barn still existed until just a few years ago. If you go out to 136 at Blaine and they have this really cool little country store there, what's it called? Country Bart's store. Bart's Bait and Tackle. Oh, that one. Yeah. Love that place. Love their ice cream. Love their barbecue. Just love it. Love it. Love it. But right there in 1969, there was a little barn out there, and we used to. You just said the word shovel dried manure, and sell it to landscaping companies for a dollar a bucket. Works good. A dollar a bucket, and it. I mean, that's a good buy. Sure it is. And and I don't know what they sold it for, but it didn't matter. But we did the big five gallon bucket for a dollar. And it is some of the best stuff you can put on your flowers. Absolutely. It is, it is awesome. It'll make hair grow on your head. Hey, I want to try that. <laughs> oh, gosh, y'all. I'm going to go out and get a cow pity and sit it on his head. What I just thought think? about that. Maybe it'll work. I'd have to smell it. I don't know about that. I have to think about that. Well. They got that non-fragrant kind, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. It is spring approaching. There will be gardens. I love, yesterday mm -hmm. I saw the first March flowers. A lot of them that haven't bloomed yet, but a few days ago we saw a few that were blooming. But yeah. yesterday I saw on a hillside, and we have to say good morning, good morning. We love you, we love you, we love you. We spent some time with Mary Ann Grady Anderson. She is looking amazingly well. Good. Um, thank you very much for your prayers for her. She is going through more test after test after test after test after test and you have a test and then your insurance company tells you to have another test and then I don't get that that a man sitting behind a desk kind of like this with a pants on a piece of paper that's never seen you decides what happens to you medically now do you get that concept in the world today no but I understand that's the way it works yeah remember yeah. when a doctor Corporate. you know a doctor would make the decision that right. yeah you need this test so I'm gonna order it well no that's not how things work today not today so, unfortunately so anyway miss Mary please continue to pray for her she has got to have more test to get results of the test y'all get it yeah so, and that is based on our insurance company. So, so there you go. Hey, you're talking about the flowers blooming on a hillside. It kind of reminds me of that old gospel song. Once on a hillside. Oh, you're going to get to hear it. Flowers today. were blooming. <laughs> no, that's, a new, that's another song, different song. Mm. Hey, I was going to tell you, uh, uh, the way the economy is going these days. I'm going to use these and go buy me an ice cream. People are starting to turn loose of their, their old coins and their old currency. Uh, this is showing old, up at the older bank. than yeah. me, you'll notice. Yeah, this is a... Uh, <laughs> oh. Let's see. This is a 1942 Mercury dime for those of you who know what those I are. I it was older than me. Anyway, that's a Mercury dime. Uh, this was graded Mint State 65 full band for those who are into that kind of thing. That coin there is worth $35 on the market. And this one here is a 1940D. Now, y'all, it's a dime. One dime. If you had had this dime and put it in your dresser drawer and never spent it and kept it in mint condition, 10 cents would have turned into? This one here is worth $65, $65. on the market. $65. And there are some that are worth a lot more than that. So Where else could you turn 10 cents into $65? In America. Well, there no, you go. I, are you going to sell those? Yes, I am. I've got two guys wanting them right now. So. Uh -huh. Are they fighting over them? They are. They're kind of bidding over them. So, uh, I've got well, a lot I of... know two men, and I know how stingy they are, <laughs> so they are worth a whole lot of money. Because both these guys are really, really nice guys, but very conservative. I've got a lot very of rare coins, and I, that's what I like doing. And a lot of silver, and a lot of silver is being changed over hand over hand right now. And uh, mm -hmm. gold, I sold some gold lately, and uh, a lot of silver. So. Let me ask you something. Copper is up to the point that people are stealing whole air conditioning units mm -hmm. off churches. They are stealing air yep. conditioning units off schools. They're they're doing things that are wild and crazy over the price of copper. What is a penny made of? Well, it's made out of copper, but not as much as it used to be. The older okay. pennies had a lot of more copper in them. In fact, uh, they don't do this. Well, some people are, but the old pennies are, are worth more in copper than the, the one cent that, okay. that it represents. So Probably does that mean if you have more. wheat pennies Possibly. Wheat pennies and some of the older 1950s and 60s uh, Lincoln pennies, yeah. They started backing off on the copper content a few years back, but uh, yeah, they're worth more in copper than they are one cent. That's weird. Yeah, That's weird. that gives you an idea of what's going on. Uh, uh, uh. Now, will you keep certain things or will you just sell as the market will bear? Uh, both. Uh, I've got some that I just won't turn Is there loose something of. you just can't let go of? Yeah, there's some things I've got some sentimental value to, but. Uh, Why would it be sentimental? It's money. 
because it's uh, when I bought it and who I bought it from, uh -huh. that kind of thing. But uh, okay. a lot of it I've, I've sold. Uh, you know, money's money, and that's yeah. what I buy it for. I, I invest in it. So if you're going to invest in it, you got to And today you loose. said silver is $32 an ounce. It's around $32 an ounce, yes. And in the 80s when it went to 22 I took my beautiful sterling silver tea set and sold it. And I can remember the little creamer it brought a ridiculous price. And I was thrilled to your death, mm -hmm. you know. But had I held it, I got $22 for it. Okay, 32 now? Yeah, and, and for years it's been around nine, seven, eight, nine dollars an ounce. But one thing you got to remember on dimes, quarters, half dollars, silver dollars, anything 1964 and before that had 90% silver content in the coin. Wow. So your silver dollars and your half dollars are bringing a lot of money just in mm -hmm. silver. They're worth more than their face value too. Isn't that so, something? Mm -hmm. Your newer ones have 40% silver. Okay, what is going to happen with money as we see it? Do you see them? Well, things. I do. Whether it's in our lifetime or not, I don't know. But the Bible tells of there being a one world type currency oh. thing. And that's going to happen. It's just a matter of when, what century, you know, when that would happen. But I think you saw Europe years ago to go to the euro. They mm -hmm. consolidated their money. And I think eventually they're, they're going to all consolidate one way or the other. So I don't want them to confuse us, though. No. I like it like it is. I don't like change. I don't I'm, either. I'm and, very strange. I don't want things to differ, and I don't like for them to go this way. I just like it like it is. What's really strange to me is to see the currency change over the last few years. You went from the old money to the newer stuff with all the holograms in it and the, right. all the little numbers all over and it. And it's and, because of printing. Well, that and counterfeiting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And what I understand, uh, when the bank gets an old note in, they ship it down to the Federal Reserve say if it's in Atlanta or wherever, and they shred it. And so they shred millions of dollars a day down there. Now let me ask you something. If you if you go somewhere and somebody gives you a counterfeit hundred dollar bill, like in change or whatever, mm -hmm. and then you try to spend that, do you have to trace where you got it? I mean, at some point in time, did you get shafted? That actually happened to my wife about three years ago when she was a waitress at the steakhouse. Mm -hmm. They paid her, uh, gave her a hundred dollar bill, she went to, to put it in the bank. The bank called her, said, uh, you need to come down here. This money you put in is counterfeit. Wow. They found out there were about three or four more in Jasper at the same time. So mm -hmm. somebody passed through there and spent some counterfeit money. Mm -hmm. Well, um, the bank wouldn't make it good, of course. They had to call in the big uh, Fed guys about mm -hmm. that. And then, of course, uh, her employer made it back up. So. But yeah, it's, you have to watch out for that. Well, it's still I, going on. I wouldn't know the difference, but I know that when you go, I went in the store the other night with a hundred dollar bill, and they hold it up and they do this little thing with this little marker and yada mm -hmm. yada yada. And I guess that's how they determine it. But how does it get through the cracks? If they checked it at the dollar store, how does it get through the cracks? Well, not everybody checks it. I mean, if you go to a restaurant or a lot of people don't check stuff like that. There are only certain institutions that do that, mm -hmm. and it's sad for collectors like me who like getting crisp, uh, clean bills that when they put the mark on it, it just... It's gone. Well, it ruins the value of it, mm -hmm. so... Mm -hmm. Well, um, we're going to talk about something that's sad. We've talked about businesses closing. We talked about how many numbers of people are unemployed. In a business, it was very, very important to Jasper and, and, and a... To me. And, and to you, yeah, um, has closed now. Goss Truck and Tractor. Goss Tractor on the highway. And yep. please pray for that family. <laughs> uh, I understand Stanley's been called to preach. Didn't know that. Uh, I heard that. And I said, maybe the Lord's got a better plan for him. You know, good maybe the Lord has a better plan for him. I so, didn't know that. That's good. But it's sad because that, once again, will put people out of work. A lot and of people. Many people who had worked there had worked there for many, many years. Yeah, decades. Not just a few years, but decades. Yeah. Even at the old place. It's, it's a very, very sad time. Once again, Jasper is facing a business closing. And it's not just a business. It's a family business. It's a, been there forever. A big so. business. Yeah, yeah. Not just a little so, bitty business. So we want to say, um, you know, please pray for this family. He is he is going to um, turn a corner and possibly do something that uh, maybe the Lord had bigger and better plans for him. Well, I bought so. all my equipment there for the last uh, several years and got it repaired there. So right. I've got to look at right. elsewhere to get repairs done. A lot of farmers have depended on them for That's a right. long, long time. So, um, But we also, you know, we have Mason Tractor up the road. That's and true. so you can go there. And mm -hmm. I think they'll honor the warranty work, will yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's so all I the think same. that's going to be a big issue. People who have just purchased those items are like, "What now?" You know, and and it was scary because that was a big, it was a big deal to see that place on the highway. Well, I'm not here to advertise for Kubota, but that's great quality stuff, and I loved using it. So uh, it's just sad. Well, and if you do need warranty work, I know that Mason Tractor will, will yeah, honor your warranty. Will. So, so there you go. 
We're going to move to the guys who pay the bills. These are our sponsors, and I will tell you, today I could really handle an Annie's Biscuit and Gravy, and I'm going to turn my head when this commercial comes I'm already having my on. breakfast. They are open now at night. They are open, is it Wednesday? Wednesday through Saturday. Saturday night, and they have meat and vegetables available at night. They have hamburger steaks available. They have everything. But to come in here hungry in the morning and be drinking this bloody old coffee with, yeah, you know, they have a lot of, ain't not a lot of food content to this. And I have to watch the Annie's commercial. just don't seem right, does it? Just turn your head. I'll turn my head. Let the rest of them folks watch I'll it. Turn, yeah, I'll turn my head. No, they're probably watching and saying, I believe I'll get in my car and go down there just as soon as this show's over. So there well, you that's go. That's the problem, though. She loves it so much. She just can't stand to watch it this I morning. She wants it. it. I do love she it. She wants it. We're going to take a break. We're going to go to our sponsors and to my friend Rich Scott. And let me tell you, yes, the building is full again. And for y'all who want to come today, again, 3.30 to 5.30, come pilfer through <laughs> all the stuff we've got. Got a lot of stuff in the Lawson Chevrolet building again, and many items are on trading time. If you have things you'd like to sell, get in touch with my friend Rich Scott today, live here at 5 o'clock. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back, and then we will get ready to share a very positive message with you. Okay, this was y'all's Easter present surprise gift from me. Is this Inspirational Thursday? It is, and I just couldn't keep it. I couldn't hold it. I couldn't put it up. I had to show it to you. Now, if you'd gotten Freddie to preach Tuesday, you wouldn't have to well, do this. Well, I said he preaches to me. He's always... I'm sure he does. You know, he is. Let me tell you, we got to give this young man credit. He has kept me on a... He's so structured, and you know me, Bill. I am not structured. You needed somebody Now, like y'all, I needed somebody to structure me. My power bill is down $100 a month. I mean, he watches everything. He is very you know what? good. He, he for needs me. to go run for Congress. He does because Cut he out the could spending. balance the budget. That's what I was going to say. If everybody lived like they live, you know, they take care of business, they pay their way, they do everything right, then the United States would not be in trouble. So why didn't the brackets go to Congress? Because they. Point. I got my power bill and I went running in there and I said, look, it's down another $100. I mean, my power bill's down almost $200 a month. That means we were wasting a lot of electricity. I think we, since we handed them Monday, we need to wait till next week, not today, and just get it back on the politics because we'll skip that today. It was, it, too light today. it is a, yeah, it, it has been a tough time and you just mentioned you saw something I saw. Y'all don't look, but the gas prices went up again last night. They went up again last night. Yep. So carpool, ride with your friends. You can still afford to go to Fields of the Wood. You can still afford to go um, up to, uh, even to Catalucci. You know, you can go to see some of the beautiful free sites that God put here for all of us. But that commercial that one airline runs, uh, go, there's nothing stopping you. Well, they, have, yeah. they haven't seen my checkbook. So. <laughs> That's right, that's right. There is something stopping me. But get together a group of friends and share the cost of gas. Don't sit at home miserable and suffering because the gas prices have gone up. Just do things a little bit differently. And conserve. And call Freddie. I'll give you his phone number, and he can tell you how to conserve. He is so structured. He is so focused, and I just love that because I am not. So, so when he when he pinches the penny real hard, Abraham Lincoln actually cries. It does. It does. It does because he just... He, he budgets. Weeps. Oh, he budgets. And, and that's the way life should be. You have be, to be nowadays. If you, if you budgeted, then just think if the U.S. had budgeted, we would know how many trillions? To China, just by themselves, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we are going to go to my gift to you. Do you want to do these birthdays first? Okay, Lizzie Grant from her great-grandson, Brett. She is 90 years old. Happy, happy birthday. She don't look 90. I hope that's not her today. Surely that woman's not 90. She looks pretty good. If she is, I'm in trouble because she looks about 60. Brett, tell me that's not a current picture. Happy, happy birthday to Lizzie Grant. And there's a relative. And to Wimp Grant Wimp. from his grandson, Brett. Never there heard of a guy named Wimp. Wimp Brent. 70 years old, so Grant. So there you go. Happy, happy birthday. And this is grandson. This is great grandson. So there you are. There you are. Happy birthday to both of you. Now we're going to go to the message from yesterday on the mountain. This is at Fields of the Wood, which is just inside North Carolina. A very beautiful trip. You go up through Blue Ridge to McKaysville. Didn't they make a baseball movie out of to that? To Copper Hill. I don't know. No, but that's... that's <laughs> oh, that's Field of Dreams. If you build it, they will come. Field of yes. Dreams. I'm sorry. But, you know, they built this, and people have come for hundreds of years. And this ye this week, one of the founders one of, of Fields of the Wood, yeah, I was there on horseback <laughs> riding with this little lady who was buried last weekend. 
She was 101. She was one of the people who rode in on horseback. You remember those days? Right? Yeah, oh yeah. To find this place, to develop this place, and to make it where people do come and Easter Sunday, Easter weekend, Easter week, the place will be packed. Um, it has a snack bar that's open every single day it's open. It has a gift shop where you can buy all kinds of really neat goodies. And it is free to have picnics, Can't to have services, that. to do whatever you need to do to get in touch with your spiritual side. It is it is a beautiful, beautiful place, and it's a great trip. I'm going to suggest that your next Monday that you and Melissa are off, you drive to Fields of the Wood and just take a picnic. I'm not it's, off it's on beautiful. Mondays. I have to be here with you. Oh, well, when you leave here, you can take Melissa. That's true. Yeah, there you go. If See, I, you, I, I, I just gave up. him a vacation, and I didn't charge him a dime. You She's, know, a travel agent would have cost you, charged you for that. That's true. Yeah. That's true, and I did a lot of money. Free. I did. We're going to go right now to my friend Matt Dibler. You didn't get to see him yesterday. You didn't get to see him Tuesday, and I got to feeling really guilty about it. So I'm bringing him to you now. Keep in mind, this is unedited. We really um, we don't edit. We just go out there and fly by the seat of our pants and do what we do, and then bring it to you. This is Matt singing a cappello up on the mountain. It is beautiful, and it is a great, great message. So grab yourself a cup of coffee. Don't take a break. Don't go anywhere except sit back by the TV, kick back, and enjoy Matt Dibler. Welcome to Fields of the Wood. I can't imagine a more beautiful place to share um, a beautiful time of year. Easter is the greatest in the life of a Christian, isn't it, Matt? Well, yeah, it's the foundation for our, our faith. I mean, mm -hmm. it's what we believe in. It's what, we've, what we have confidence in, and that's what we're going to talk about. You really didn't tell me that that's what you wanted this message to be on, but as I was praying all night long, <laughs> which is another story, but another anyway, story. I, I was praying about the message and the Lord directed me to the message on the resurrection about the testimony. What, is, what does the testimony of the resurrection mean? What does it mean to you, you and I that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? What does it mean to all those that believe in Christ? Mm -hmm. And that's what we're going to be talking about here in just a little bit. This is my first time here. It's a beautiful place. It is absolutely gorgeous, and you can't, you know, I explained it to you a little bit, but you really don't get it until you come here and you see the Bible, is it 30 feet tall possibly, the Ten Commandments covering this mountain. This is, this is a facility that is open every single day at no cost. Come and pray, come and, come and be inspired by the beauty of God, because this is the most incredible place. Now, we're here in the dead of winter beginning spring soon i've been here in the fall there's there's nowhere any better to spend some time now straight across from us on the other side of the mountain is an altar mm -hmm. um, you can go there and pray you can go there and meditate you can come here and stand at the foot of the bible you're going to deliver a message today that is a message also of hope because from that tomb came a lot of hope that's right that's right well and that's not getting ahead into the message, but that's exactly what we're talking about. I mean, everything that we do and everything we believe and everything we hope for comes as a result because of what he did there at Calvary, but not only at Calvary, but through the empty tomb mm -hmm. and the testimony of that empty tomb. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing about that is nobody else, no other religion has that. Right. We have that because of that, you know, and I'm thankful that we live in an America that where we have the freedom to worship the Lord the way that we want to and the way we feel like we ought to. Uh, and other people have that same freedom, but we champion the fact that we serve a risen Savior. We serve a risen right. Savior. And today the message will um, encourage you. It will inspire you. We want you to drive up. This is just inside North Carolina across the Tennessee, North Carolina line probably two miles. It's a beautiful drive up here. There are some great little tiny towns you will pass as you come through here. And, and we encourage you, spend a day, spend an afternoon, spend a moment in this wonderful place and reflect on exactly what it means to be a Christian today. 2011, we are declaring it the year of revival, the year of recovery. America is on the road to recovery. Right now, we're going to step back, we're going to let Matt take a breath, and we're going to introduce him to the beautiful mountains as he delivers a message on hope in today, 2011. Say so, 
Well, today we're going to begin reading on our passage of Scripture in Matthew chapter 28. We'll begin reading in verse number 1 and read down through verse number 9. And it's a great passage of Scripture on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the, the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel said, and the angel answered and said, Unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was, was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, Come see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. I want to read another passage, and it's basically John's point of view from the same uh, passage of Scripture, and well, actually the same account in the Scripture. And I want to read just a few verses here in verse number 1 through 20, or 1 through 10 of uh, John chapter 10. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene, early when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and saith unto him, them, th They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher. And he, stooping down, looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet uh, went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulcher, and seeth the linen clothes lie. And the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. In this passage of scripture, we're talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And of course, out here on this, in this beautiful place down behind where the camera is standing right there, and is the, the, uh, it's just a replica of the garden tomb where Jesus actually was buried over uh, overseas of course we know that and there's an empty tomb there just as this is the same there's not a body there there's not a replica of a body there because Jesus is not there he is risen and uh, you know in this day and time with Hollywood and all the special effects it almost desensitizes those of us that believe in Christ to the real fact of this being a true story. It's not just a fic uh, fiction. It's not something that's made up. It's not a fairy tale. It's a true story that Jesus has risen. And it's interesting, the events of here. But my question as I read a passage of Scripture sometimes, I'll say, now what does this mean to me today? And what does this mean to me as I look down and as I'm speaking, which is really the first time I've ever had the privilege to speak looking at an empty tomb while we're, we're here gathered together? And what does that mean to me? What does that mean as a child of God? And I'll end up with a passage of Scripture that will share some of those thoughts as well. But what it means to me is several different things. What does that empty tomb preach to me? It preaches to me three simple things. One, it, it proves, it, it's, it's a message of proof, and that is that Jesus is who he said he was. Up to this point, his earthly ministry being three and a half years, and we, we kind of measure the span of time that he was probably 33 years old when he passed away or in that neighborhood. Uh, what does that mean to me? What does an empty tomb mean? It means everything that he said that he was during that time is true. Uh, he said, I and my father are one. He said several different things that would proclaim his own deity, that he wasn't just a man, as some people would say, he's just a good man. Well, I submit to you that if Jesus wasn't who he said he was, he wasn't a good man because he bore false witness if he wasn't who he said he was. So either you believe that he's God or you believe that he is a liar. And the Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. And the empty tomb 
supports the fact that he is who he said he was and, and who, he's, who he said he is because he still is. Uh, I like what he said. He said, I'm alive forevermore. When he rose again, he rose again never to die. And he only died because he chose to die for everybody that will ever be born on the face of the earth. I'm glad that it proves to me that he was God. I, I'm, I'm reminded of David when he went out after Goliath. His purpose, he remember the, the question he asked the men around that were gathered around as they were afraid of Goliath. He said, is there not a cause? And we wonder what that cause was. What was it that caused this young man to go out after Goliath? And he says that all the world may know that there is a God in Israel. And that was, in other words, it was a, the cause was proof that God is God and he's going to take care of his people. The empty tomb is a proof that we have believed the right thing. We, ha we don't have to wonder, do we trust the wrong thing? Now, if, if our Savior had died and never come out of the grave, as he said he would come out, well, then we wouldn't have anything to believe in. But I'm glad that I know that I know that he's out of that tomb. I don't have to go over there because I accept it by faith. But many people have been there and know that he's not there. So number one, it's proof that he is who he said he is. Number two, we see that not only is it proof, but it's a, a message of power. I'm glad we don't serve, and I, and I don't want to be disrespectful, but I'm glad I don't serve a wimpy God. We serve a God that has done what no other man can do or has ever done or ever will do. And that is he came and he rose up from the grave. He said this in the scriptures is that I have power to lay my life down. Nobody took his life. He freely gave his life. And then as we think about that, he, he freely gave it. He had power to lay his life down and he had power to take it back up. The Bible says, I love the words what Paul said when he said this, that I may know him, that I may know him. And I love these words right here and the power of his resurrection. See, I don't think we realize what power is demonstrated in an empty grave. Nobody in the world, I don't care how powerful they are, it doesn't matter how rich they are, it doesn't matter how strong they are, it doesn't matter who they are, it doesn't matter what family they come from, it doesn't matter if they're royalty or if they're beggars, it makes no difference. Nobody has the power of life. Remember back in the Garden of Eden, God created man, and as he created Adam, he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. We, there's only one in the universe that has that power, and that's our God. And that testimony of that uh, empty grave is exactly what that's preaching to us, is that there's proof that he is who he said he is, and then also it's power, and he's, do, he's done what no other man can do. Uh, what a powerful God we serve. All power is given to him in heaven and in earth, the Bible says. So we serve a powerful God. In, in, you say, well, is this a message of hope? Of course it is. If he's able to uh, have life, then he's able to have healing. He's able to have not only physical healing, but financial healing and uh, family healings. We, we look at all the people that are going through troubles in their families. We go look at that same God that had the life to, uh, had the power to resurrect uh, his own son out of the grave. That same God can take care of your finances and can take care of your family and can take care of everything that you'll ever face. So that's a powerful God. Then we think of this final point. We think of this right here. This is a tremendous thought. What a great thought that it is is not only is he who he said he is, not only has he done what nobody else can do, but I love this, this thought there, and it's a message of promise. He'll do what he said he would do. Over in John chapter 14, he says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. That's a promise. Now, I couldn't have hope in that promise of that if he was still in the grave. I'm so thankful today that we serve a risen Savior and that he, when he came out of that grave, he says, you know what? I'm doing exactly what I said I would do. I said I would lay my life down and take it back up, and that's what I've done. He is he's a God of honor. He's a God of honesty. And he said, I promised you I'd do this. So all promises then that we know that have not yet been fulfilled will be fulfilled because he's promised that he would lay down his life and take it up. He did that. And so that's the basis and the foundation of the honesty and the promises of God. Every promise in this Bible will come true. And the next promise on the agenda of Christ is this right here. He's coming to pick me up and take me home. 
I, I used to think about that when my, my mom and dad were divorced, and I'm not belly aching and I'm not whining about that. I'm thankful for the applications that I can receive from that. Every other Friday, my father would come and he would uh, pick me up and take me home for the weekend to his house and I'd spend the weekend with my dad. And uh, in the summertime, we'd go camping for a week and we just would have a great time. I remember as a young man thinking and hearing my dad drive his car down our, our dirt road as he would come to our house and how excited I would be. And I think of that and I think about my wonderful Savior. This world's in a mess. This world, even lost people in this world know that the world can't continue on the way it is. Our world scene is just in such an uproar. And let me say this, it's not, the answer is not in the Democratic Party or the Republican. It makes no difference what, what branch of government you support. It comes down to this, we're, we're not even in a governmental warfare anymore. What we're in is spiritual warfare. And the world is crying out for a redeemer, not for some organizer, not for some uh, economist that will fix all our problems. We need a spiritual revival in our land. Well, that empty tomb proves that we serve a risen Savior and that His promises are true. The Bible says when you see these things begin to come to pass, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. That's a promise. Uh, there's promises in Scripture that talk about what the world's going to go through and those that are not believers in Christ are going to go through some terrible things in the future, but you and I that are saved, because of that promise being fulfilled, all the other promises will be fulfilled. So right now, as a child of God, I'm just waiting for my Heavenly Father to send His Son to come by and pick me up and take me home. And so shall we ever be with the Lord, as Thessalonians tells us. What a promise. All the promises that you read in the Bible are true. They're just waiting to take place, and we know they will take place because I mean, look at the proof. You know, we used to use the old phrase, the proof is in the pudding. I mean, people can brag about a lot of different things, but the fact of the matter is, Christ is the only one that come out of the grave. He became what the Bible says, the first fruits. What promises? There's promises, and we won't get into every one of them, but one thing that blesses my heart is every time, it's a sad time when we stand at the foot of a grave of a loved one. That is so hard, but what a promise we have uh, because our Savior lives. He said, because I live, ye shall live also. See what we're talking about? There's that promise. Again, I can't give hope to people, uh, those that have buried their loved ones, if, if I have a Savior that's still in the grave. He said he would come out of the grave, and he did, praise the Lord. And because of that, I have no reservations telling somebody we'll see them again. We'll see that loved one again because of an empty grave, not because of me as a preacher, not because of a denomination, but because this Bible teaches us and tells us, and the world knows that there's an empty grave, and because of that, the promises are true. Boy, that's, that's rejoicing ground. That's shouting ground to say, hey, thank God for His grace and His mercy, but thank God for His promises that He's already fulfilled and the ones that He will fulfill. I want to share with you a passage of Scripture in Corinthians that is, is just kind of just sums it up better than I could ever say it myself. In 1 Corinthians chapter number uh, 15, verse 12, it kind of gives us the question, well, what if he hadn't come out of the grave? And I think it's a good way to conclude this message. It says in verse number 12, Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Verse number 13, But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain. And your faith is also vain. You see what he's saying? If Christ didn't come out of the tomb, if he didn't come, if that grave is still fulfilled with, it's filled up with a body, if that's the case, what I'm doing right here is foolishness. It's just silly because we have no foundation for our religion. We've based it on a lie. But thank God that's not the case because we based it on truth. He is truth and he did come out. So if he's not risen, then our preaching is vain, our faith is vain. Everybody here that believes in Christ, it's ridiculous to believe in Christ if he didn't come out of the grave, is what he's saying here. And then it goes on to say here, Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God. What's that mean? We're a bunch of liars if Jesus didn't come out of the grave. And then he goes on to say this, Because we have testified, every one of us that believe in Christ, have testified to someone in our lifetime that we serve a risen Savior. And as we do that, because we've done that, we've, we've actually lied if that tomb is still 
uh, holding the body of our Savior. Because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is uh, not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. And listen to this one. Ye are yet in your sins. One of the greatest joys in my life is to know that my sins are forgiven. That is a thrill to my soul to know that my sins are forgiven. The Bible says, there's an old song that says this, Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away, rising he justified freely forever. That's, that's a wonderful thought. Uh, we are justified because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we would still be in our sins if he didn't come out of that grave. And then verse number 18 says, Then they which, uh, listen here, Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. They're, they're gone. They're perished. In the, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable, if Christ be not raised. Now wouldn't it be a sad story if that's where that passage of Scripture stopped? I couldn't share with the singletons the message of hope that we have if that's where that passage of Scripture stopped. I couldn't share that message with my brother and as we stood there at the foot of his little three-year-old daughter. I couldn't do that with, at my mother's grave at 57 years old as a, as a young mother and she passed away young. Uh, I, I look at that and I think, you know, boy, we'd be miserable if we didn't have hope. Some of you have buried your own spouses and how terrible that would be. But you look down over that hill and you look at that grave over there. Because that grave is empty, we have a message of hope. Listen to what the Bible says. If the, if the verses stopped right there, then we would be miserable. But look, verse 20 says this, But now, I love the tense, I love the grammar of our Bible. It's so up to date. But now, right now, today, in 2011, 2000, now is Christ risen from the dead. Not only 2,000 years ago, but he still lives. Now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. What does that mean? Because he lives, your loved ones will live. My loved ones will live. What a message of hope. What a message that we can share with all these folks that don't have that hope. Let me tell you this. If Christ conquered death, hell, and the grave, he can handle your problems. He can take care of every one of them. They're just things. But the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. We serve a risen Savior. We know songs. Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph o'er his foes. He arose the victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with the saints to reign. What a thought. Low in the grave he lay, waiting that coming day. Those songs are all based on a risen Savior. And we have that risen Savior. And thank God today we have hope because of a living, risen Savior. Not just back then was he a risen Savior, but now is Christ risen today. And if I read that 20 years from now, he'll still be living and he's alive forevermore. And I thank God that I serve a risen Savior. Because of that, I can offer you hope. And we are saved to a lively hope because he's alive. Now let's share that message with a world that needs to hear. We've got a positive proof. I mean, we've got proof that he lives. He did what he, 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 he is who he said he is. We have the fact of the power. He's done what, no man, what nobody else can do. And he can still do that. And then we also have the promise. He will do what he said that he would do. He's going to come by. Remember, we're just waiting on him to come by and pick us up and take us home. What a day, glorious day that's going to be. I think it would be good if we just took just a second and sang a little bit of a song right here because it just fits because there's coming that day. And I think the folks here could probably just join in. I don't know if the microphone will pick up with it, but you can imagine their voices singing and you can sing with us right there in your home as we sing this little song right here. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come. No more clouds in the sky. No more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day that will be. And there'll be no sorrow there. 
No more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. See, that song's a promise. What a day, glorious day that's going to be. And I, I tell you, the, the Bible says, you know, Paul, you know, as you study the Bible, we get a beautiful picture of heaven. We know the gates of pearl, the street of gold, mansions, and all these things. And in your mind's eye, you think of a beautiful place. But I love what Paul said. He was caught up to the third heaven. He didn't know if it was a vision or if it was in reality, but he knew something about it. He, he got a glimpse of glory. And as he got a glimpse of glory, he made this statement. I'm not, he said, I'm not permitted to tell you what all that I saw. He said, but I can tell you this much, and I love this. The half has not been told. Folks, we're going to have a reunion. We're going to have a wonderful time in heaven. It's all because of an empty grave. Father, thank you for your grace and your goodness unto us. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for these folks that have come out. And I pray, Lord, they've received a blessing and maybe some encouragement. Lord, we serve you, a God that has uh, resurrected our wonderful Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm glad that, Father, we believe in him as our personal Savior. And I pray for anybody that may be watching that the Holy Spirit would touch their heart if they've never accepted Christ, that they would be saved. Father, we've got the message of hope. There is proof because of the resurrection. There is power because of the resurrection, and the promises are true all because of the resurrection. Father, we do look forward to the day that you'll come by and pick us up and take us home. What a day that's going to be in Christ's name. Amen. Once on a hillside, people were gathered, hoping to see Him as thousands were fed. He touched the blind eye, he healed broken spirits. He moved with compassion, and He raised up the dead. Once on a hillside, people were gathered, watching as Jesus was crucified. No one showed mercy to the one who had healed them. Yet Jesus loved them as he suffered and died. But once on a hillside, people were gathered, for Jesus had risen and soon would ascend. And then as he blessed them. He rose toward the heaven, but He left us this promise that He'd come back again, and we shall see Jesus just as they saw Him. There is 
no greater promise than this. When he returns with power and glory, we shall see Jesus. We shall see Jesus just as He is. This was an amazing day. It, it was so good to be able to share this with y'all. Um, this place is absolutely incredible, and I want y'all to take a trip. It is just outside Turtletown, Tennessee, headed up just across the North Carolina line. An absolute great place to spend a, a moment, spend an hour, spend the afternoon. Um, you could walk up and down the steps, or you could drive up and down like we did. Freddie actually drove the motorhome up to the top of the hill and a little narrow driveway, but it was wonderful. Yes. And it is, there's the tomb. Now that is, that is the focal point of today's message because there is an empty tomb. That's what it's all about. So yeah. that was amazing. Nice. It was amazing. I hope Very you enjoyed nice. Brother Matt's message. And I encourage you, take a trip. Take some friends, take a loaf of bread, take some peanut butter, take you a jar of mayonnaise and a, a pack of bologna. And just go up there and spend the day. It is beautiful and it is very peaceful other than I did notice the road that goes right in front of it, a lot of truckers going up and down that road, dump trucks. Hmm. And I think they are working from the company over out of Copper Hill. They're bringing loads out of there. So, um, but what a beautiful way to spend the day. And thank you to each and every person who was there with us. A lot of folks wanted to meet Matt and that was really cool to have them there because you get to see him every Tuesday almost every Tuesday, and um, I thought it was important to share this Easter message early with you. I think that we need a message of hope, and, and that was a message of hope. Easter's not far off. Easter's not far off, and um, if you have not made plans for Easter holiday and you don't have a home church, there will be a big gathering at Fields of the Wood. There will be preaching. There will be all kinds of things going on. People will stay there for days, so um, it is a great place, and it, have you ever been to Israel? Have you ever been? No, I haven't. Okay. Um, I can't, I don't want to go that far away. I'd but, like to. Would you? Yeah, yeah, I would. Now, I know a lot of church groups do that during the Easter season, but I would be just as happy getting in the car and going to Fields of the Wood because it has that same feeling. You know, it's just a very peaceful place. And um, they have a baptismal pool. They have an altar. They have a landing strip for airplanes because wow. back in the heyday, they did have um, folks flying in there. It, it is just a beautiful, beautiful place. And Hannah is working on a special we did some interviews with people up there who know the history of this place and it was founded through people fought and, and tried to stop it. They didn't want this, this big conglomerate church to come in there. Thousands have worshiped there and it took a lot of folks really fighting for what they believed in to have that happen and Fields of the Wood has been um, a home base to many, many church members for a long, long time. Imagine so, somebody trying to stop it. Imagine that. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. and, and they did do that. And, and when you read the history of the Church of God, there's the Church of God, Church of God of Prophecy, and they did a little split. And I can't remember which one of them is in charge of this area now. But um, it does have a wonderful gift shop, and it has the snack bar, and it is, you know, parking is free. You can go up there and have a picnic. You can go there and meditate. You can go take your CD player and listen to music for most of the time. And this is weird. If you think the Lord doesn't work in mysterious ways, I had said, Lord, let it be sunny and warm so Matt can do this. Well, sun would have caused some problems with shadows. We had no sun. And I kept trying to call them to tell them, could you turn the, um, they have PA system that puts music all through the park the whole time you're there. Well, I kept trying to call them the day before and I couldn't get anybody on the phone. I just kept getting the recording and I thought, man, I don't need to be up there doing this and that music blasting at us. We get there. It is the only time I've ever been to that park the music wasn't playing. I didn't even have to ask them to turn it off. They turned it off. 
Well, so you, it was very strange. You asked the person in charge, didn't I you? I guess I did. I guess I did. <laughs> but we had an incredible day, and thank you, thank you, thank you to the folks who came to be with us. It's thank amazing you. how that works. It oh, it, it was, and Matt went inside the Bible to pray before he delivered his message, and and he said, "This is a very powerful place. It is a very powerful place that is almost." forgotten because a lot of people used to travel there forever with their families and now they don't as much so I'm going to encourage you as we approach the Easter season take a trip take a picnic take an afternoon take a morning um, I think it would be beautiful to see the sunrise there well I feel dumb now I was what? giving you credit for walking up all those stairs and then you told me that Freddie drove you up to the top we drove up in the motorhome, and he said, were you nervous? Why, I Lord, no, I wasn't nervous. That man could drive that thing through. Now, I will tell you, I've seen the, I've seen the movie RV. Have you seen the movie RV? Uh, not all of it, just part Okay, of it. I don't really want to take the motorhome in places like Robin Williams took that motorhome because they did end up in some pretty crazy places. Or like the roads in India where they drive the Yes, dangerous. yes. Now, that, that just, that bores me. After so many of those little tiny roads, I'm so tired of seeing that. Yeah. You know, yeah. about two weeks of that, and I'm like done with it because it's it's always the same old thing over and over. Yeah. Yeah, and they and they build up to something fixing a bad happen. And, and it nothing never happens, ever happens. Never happens. So yeah, that didn't that didn't work. Just with like me. on ice road truckers. Yeah, it didn't. Well, I like ice road truckers now better than I like the India thing. The India thing just didn't capture me. So, but they drive some funny looking trucks over there. Don't hey, they? Absolutely. Why don't you get you a couple they, of trucks like that? Yeah, they do. They look like they were spray painted in it. You talk yeah. about graffiti going on. Yeah. Well, we live in the greatest country in the world. We live in the United States of America. We are so blessed. There is a lot going on in our country that causes unrest. Um, the fuel prices being the biggest part of them. We are seeing people Keeps me up at night. having a hard time dealing with it. We are seeing revolts in Wisconsin. We are seeing a little bit of things going on in Atlanta right now. Yeah. Atlanta has gotten together and either supported for or against what's happening in Wisconsin. There will be unrest in our country because there are things happening that I don't think the good Lord's happy with. And more, uh, there's some more lawmakers in Indiana fled to Illinois to get out of their mess that they got a boat on. It, it, is, it is a very strange time in our nation, yep. but we still live in the greatest country of all, and we have the right to vote, and the right That's to vote means thing. we put the people in there to do the job. Now, the man in Wisconsin was put in there to... to slice and dice the budget and try to get it balanced and he got in trouble because he was doing his job so it's kind of crazy but i heard on the radio this morning that general motors reported this morning the first time since 2004 i believe it is that they made a profit praise the lord <laughs> i don't know where they made it because yeah. i ain't seen any new cars have you i have i have seen and general i will motors say products. yes i have seen the impala i think it's one of those cars that gets about 31 miles per gallon and i think that's the thing people are looking at replacing the older where well, you said it cost you how much in that old thing of yours? Well, that old truck i drive it's a lot i mean i went to town twice and i spent 25 dollars in gas that's like 12 dollars and 50 cents to run to town and get a loaf of bread 25 dollars no no but, but I think people are looking at the newer, more economical cars, and I think we will see some car sales improve. I will, hope so. Will you trade in your Tahoe for a car? Well, I like that Tahoe a lot. I like the roominess. I like the spaciousness. I like everything about it. How about the gas mileage? I don't even care about the gas mileage. It's 15.6 miles per gallon. You do care about the gas mileage. I really don't because I come to work 17 miles. I go back down the road 26 miles to the next job. Okay, that's about 40 miles a day I drive. That's my driving. And then that's about all I drive now. So it really isn't affecting me as bad as it did when I was ripping the roads. You know, you could, I used to, did you remember that when I used to rip the you roads? You still rip them pretty good. I used to have a lot of time to rip the roads. I don't have no time no more. When I leave here, y'all don't know it, but I am hot glued to a desk. You're still the little old lady on 515. Huh? Yes, I am. Yes, you are. But, but I don't drive near the miles I used to drive. So I well, hope don't. that we will get through it. I hope we will get through but, this. But see, if you had a car that got 31 miles a gallon, you could drive more. Well, if Miss Hannah, if she hadn't bought that little car she bought, she's got a good buy and a good car that gets about 25, and it's a hot-looking car. So that's kind of what I I might go to but next That's all small time. for you, isn't it? You like, I like, you like it. the big Yeah, I know it, but I like her car, so I don't know. I have to think about this. You like the and leg it, room. I like it gets 25 miles to the gallon, but I don't know. I think I'll still continue suffering through, and right. I hope, I hope that we will get some breaks in the fuel prices. Well, you and I both agree on one thing. Until fuel prices come down. It's tough. 
Well, you always talk about the year of recovery. Uh -huh. For that to happen, fuel prices have got fuel to come down. Fuel prices have got to come down. And um, I talked to one of the big, big, big distributors um, Friday, I believe, and he had just come back from a big, big meeting, and they said, until Memorial Day, we are not going to see any relief at all. And after Memorial Day, maybe for summer, they will give us a little bit of a break. That's when it always goes up. Well, he's saying it might reverse this year. But I will tell you, um, we are facing, it is not the, you know, how we look at how much the drums are. Well, that drum being $85, he said it is what Wall Street is doing on speculation. So speculation and the refinery cost. He said the refinery cost has got a lot to do with what's happening. Well, with two the weeks ago it was one word called Egypt. This week it's two words called Muammar Gaddafi. I don't care. They're using these for excuses. They will take any excuse Ain't that in guy the just world. An idiot? Ain't he just an idiot? Well, yeah. Lord, I hope his folks ain't watching. And an ugly one in the beat. I, mean, I hope his folks ain't watching. Fella. Lord, we're going to get slaughtered. I don't Would care you? if they're watching or not. Well, Muammar yeah. Gaddafi, you are one ugly fellow. That's my opinion. <laughs> oh, Lord, Bill. Hush, now you're going to get He it. looks like he's already wearing a Halloween mask. Please not. Hush, don't be mean. Oh, you're acting, she's agging me on to what it is. <laughs> Don't be mean. There is a lot of unrest. He don't in the like world. us anyway. He don't like us. And I don't us. like him. He don't like us. That's no, he the don't. truth. Now that's the truth. I mean the guy preserved his bombed out house that Reagan blew all the crap and back and there it is still sitting there. What still sitting idiot. there. Still sitting there. What an there. idiot. Well let's talk a little bit about um, the 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 things we can do to change what's happening in America. What can you do as an individual? Uh, try to make more money and stay at home more. Well, or, or try to balance our own budgets. Try yeah, to balance and, our own budgets, and, and that's that. one thing, survival. I think yeah. survival is important to all of us. I know how Because to if you survive in business, you're going to go back out to eat. You're going to go back to the store. You're mm -hmm. going to start spending again. We have got to keep the little businesses going. 27 million little businesses need us to support them. If we balance our own budgets and it gives us money to go out to dinner, to go out and have a biscuit for breakfast in the morning. You know, if we balance our budgets, then we can help the little businesses. And it's the little businesses I'm worried about. When Goss Tractor closed, that kind of was like, oh no, Jasper can't take another hit. Jasper has had some hard hits lately. Well, I know over the last 30 to 45 days, I think there's, I've counted over 150 people have lost their jobs in Pickens County. Yeah, it's very, it is very scary. That's not counting Gilmer County, Cherokee County, Fannin County, and so on. Well, I think the counties north of here are doing a little bit better than we are. That's I'm good. not sure what's happening, but. We but, just ain't living right down there in Pickens yes, County. Yes, we so. are. Yes, we are. It's just tough times. But y'all buckle down, buckle down. Get your own budget in order so you can go back out to eat. You my, can go back shopping. I tell my dad that whenever he, he calls up and says, it ain't rain to drop over here. Y'all getting all the rain up there in Pickens County. I said, well, y'all just ain't living right over in <laughs> Bartow County. <laughs> He said, that's your mama's fault. That's oh, what Lord, and if y'all want to buy any pecans, I got to tell you, the bargain of the year. His yeah. poor little mama is sitting and shelling pecans. Him How too. much is it a pound they're selling well, them they for? Well, they sold them for $4 a pound, shelled in the bag, one pound for $4. So shelled. we're going to have pecan pies at our house because we got yeah. some pecans going they, on. They picked, in, in two days, they picked 30, let's see, 31 pounds one day and 33, uh, 33 pounds the next day. 60 pounds of pecans in two days. Wow. Times four dollars a pound yeah. is how much money? That's about two hundred something dollars. And and some people on Social Security don't draw any more than that in a month. Well, now see, he's on Social Security. Uh, he he retired from Union Carbide, which was a great big company for mm -hmm. years and years. He worked there thirty three years. Retired. He draws some from that, but it still ain't enough money. So he right. still he does the pecan thing. He raises worms, sells mm -hmm. worms. He right. loves that, right? And he, he still paints a little and all that. So he does a lot of things. He cuts a little grass, and uh -huh. he's seventy four years old, but doing whatever. Make ends meet. But he don't owe yeah. nobody nothing. Yeah. He yeah. hadn't for years. Yeah. I know somebody like that. He hadn't too. owed nobody a dime for years. I know somebody like that too. Yeah. That is pretty cool to balance their budget and then to teach others. And well, so we hope that you will write your congressman, write your senators, tell them that you know Bill's daddy and that he balanced his budget. And I don't know why in the world Congress can't balance our. My budget. dad is so funny. He's tried to teach me for years. He says my grandpa taught me to pay cash for everything, and he he just don't borrow money, uh -huh. and he's never owned a credit card, never owned an ATM card. Uh -huh. He don't go into debt for nothing, and if wow. he don't, he says, if I don't have the money, I ain't gonna do it. Now, does that that's rubbed off on you a little bit? It has, but you know yeah. what? You can go over to his place, and every time you go over there, he's got some money to do something. But I'm gonna tell y'all something. Is your daddy's house air conditioned? 
Uh, he's got a window unit, yeah, two window units. If you go to visit, he don't like it. No, if you go to visit, you're gonna be sweating because Dad ain't gonna spend no money on electricity. The hotter the better. He likes August. <laughs> he can handle that. When I see he was he was 16 years old before he ever saw electricity mm -hmm. in his house mm -hmm. and indoor plumbing, so he was used to that. And he don't like air conditioning to save his life. He'd that rather so he loves hot weather. Well, I know, <clears throat> I know of one person who doesn't have air conditioning, and he happens to represent us at the state level, Rick Jaspers. Uh -huh. They do not have air conditioning by choice, and that just blows my mind. So he's very conservative. His wife is very conservative. She has rubbed off on him. I hope that he will get down to the House, and he will teach the other politicians that you can balance the budget. You think he'll so. take the air conditioning out of the state house? I doubt it. I doubt it. I think they get real sweaty and hot sometimes anyway. But so. you know this for a fact too. A lot of older people that were raised in those days, they don't like air conditioning for one reason. They think it makes you sick. Yeah. Yeah. True. And because it keeps all the germs inside. Well, and that and plus, you know, they, they just like nature. Right. Right. They don't like well, that. Well, I like stuff. 67 in nice and cool common yeah, collection. You're, you're, yeah. you're hollering. Where's you're the air conditioning? Air conditioning. Turn on the AC. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Especially out of the car. Don't, right. don't get a car without one. No. Oh, gosh, can y'all imagine? I can remember owning cars though that didn't have air conditioning. Well, you know, this house I bought, this old house, it don't have central heat and air. It doesn't? No. Oh, no. I've got a few window units we'll put in. I've got. Y'all, his wife's a, a good woman. His wife is a good, good woman. <laughs> well, we're conserving. I mean, we only cool off the rooms we need to cool off and Oh my gosh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Wow. It'd, it'd be comfortable. Well, we're going to take a break and we're going to go to have a lot going on on the community calendar. Please pay attention because there are a lot of events happening this weekend. One is going to be happening over at the North Georgia Christian Academy, raising money for a family who desperately needs our help. There will be an all day yard sale. There'll be some music. There'll be some cakes. There'll be yada, yada, yada going on. And we encourage you to hang out there this Saturday. And also, we will be at the seminar at Harbor Ministries. And I'll be there about 1.30 on Saturday afternoon. So please join us for that. No, I ain't going to preach. I'm going to probably be preached to and sung to. But it is $15 for you ladies. That includes a meal. So it's it's hard to buy a meal and enjoy something for $15. I think so you need it's to take up bargain. preaching. I don't want to. You talk more than most preachers do anyway. I do, don't I? Yeah. I you do, always don't got I? something to say. What, did, what would you do if I just sat here quiet? You I'll check your temperature for first thing. <laughs> check my died. temperature. We're going to take a break and go to our community calendar, and then we'll be right back. I'm trying to find them.
Okay, we have said happy birthday all week long to our dear friend, Miss Alicia Bridgman, and we just saw on the community calendar. Was she 29 again? <clears throat> 29 again, and gorgeous, and feeling well. She went to the doctor yesterday, had her checkup, and we are hoping that everything is really, really good. Now, um, her birthday is today, and we will not disclose her age, but I will tell you, um, she's age. getting younger and getting prettier every single day. If you would like to be with the Bridgmans on Sunday night, they're having who? Uh, the Dixie Echoes. Dixie Echoes yep. will be there 6 o'clock Sunday night. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Antioch yep. Baptist Church, which is about 20 some odd miles from Jasper. And so. you saw the Bridgemans will be there too. Of course, that's their home church. And Danny O'Day, who's the uh, DJ over there at WCON in Cornelia. Right. Now, radio lost a personality a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I think it was uh, last Friday. Uh, many of you know and heard of Ludlow Porch. He was a great guy. I, I love listening to his show. He was funny. Yeah, real name was Robert Hansen. Lived up on Burnt Mountain and had a Dawsonville address, but he, he had a big show for many, many years. And I was telling you, uh, years before he got into radio, he was a, known as a trivia expert. Of course, he was the half-brother of Louis Grizzard, too. Mm -hmm. Loved, loved Louis Grizzard. I've read his book yeah. so many times. Loved him, loved him, loved and him. And Louis wrote about him many, many times. But anyway, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Ludlow was known as a trivia expert, and so he was invited to come on WRNG in Atlanta to be on the radio for about 30 minutes, and it turned into 30-something years. Yeah. yeah. And he was on WSB radio for quite a few years, and then he got on his own network, the Fun Seekers Network, and uh, just loved talking to the guy, and he was great to talk about anything and he's always a nice guy mm -hmm. and i always love the nice way guy. he ended his show about uh every day he says uh whatever <laughs> you do find somebody to be nice to that's right yeah. very nice gentleman if you can tell me the name of the restaurant in jasper that love 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 to support love to support this restaurant love to be there love to spend time with the young man who owns it. Call us at 866-939-2329 and you will win a package of CDs from the Comeback Kid, Bill Sinyard, and First Mountain City. Three yeah, CDs. Three of them, yeah. Three CDs. Can we reach so you're that? gonna win a package deal. If you can tell us the name of the restaurant, they are also famous for my famous favorite. Love to walk in there and order. I think it's Aunt Rita's Lemon Pie. It is to die for. Call us at 866-939-2329. We will tell you, um, he was one of those guys. He was he was a mainstay of North Georgia, and he promoted North Georgia. Yeah. If you have an opportunity, tell somebody nice about the area we serve. Invite him to come and visit. Invite him to come and spend a weekend. Invite him to check out many of our great restaurants because he did support this area and he loved to talk about it. And he loved to talk about his home up in the mountains. He was a Marine too. He was. He served in the Marines. He was. Now how old was he about? Oh, he's probably in his late, maybe mid to late 70s. At, right. Maybe. Might have been older than that. I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, but he loved supporting and thank goodness for folks like him who talked about and who pumped up this area. So if you can pump up this area, do it. Don't say anything bad about this place. Say something nice. If you can't say something nice, don't say nothing at all. Is well, that right? Well, he said that too, yeah. And uh, one of the things, if y'all listened to his show back in the early to mid-90s, uh, if you listened back then, I was one of the wackos. I was Mr. Mom. I called in quite often. So. Now, he stayed at home and raised four little kids and then worked another shift. So you and Melissa, you passed in the night. Yep. When you stayed at home and you were Mr. Mom, you really enjoyed that, didn't you? I did. I did. And I actually homeschooled the kids for about five years. Mm -hmm. Yep. What kind of grades did they make? Oh, A's. Of course. Of course. Because Trivia Genius here was their teacher. <laughs> now, would you do that again in today's world? I would. Uh, and, of course, uh, it, it ran its course because mm -hmm. the kids started getting into some things that I wasn't taught and I couldn't teach right. them course when you get closer to the high school basically are you smarter than a fifth grader by the time your well, kid am, today gets to the fifth grade you feel so stupid i'm not probably smarter than a tenth grader anymore no. they, they teach them stuff they didn't teach it us it is very different it is very yeah. different yeah it is but. now don coker won three cds bye and we've got to have don and judy on because don's wife judy what was the answer the answer was woodbridge in of course <laughs> of course Don's wife, Judy, is a heart attack survivor. Uh -huh. Now, she had a heart attack. She had the symptoms going on. She didn't realize it was a heart attack. But she survived it. And I think it would be neat to share her story sure. of when things start not feeling right, get it checked out. Get it checked Absolutely. out. She was very lucky that she made it through a nasty heart attack. She was actually up in the mountains listening to gospel music. 
that that could bring on a heart attack. Well, Don, Don I hope you enjoy these, and I have a policy on these. Uh, listen to them, and I hope you like them. But if you don't like them, uh, we, we have a policy. If you don't like them, just throw them away. No, share them with somebody else. There you go. There you go, Don. <laughs> um, it, we talk about women's health a lot, and women do not take care of themselves. Sometimes they're too busy taking care of everybody else. You got some more birthdays? Got some more birthdays. Tommy Grizzle, happy, happy birthday on 224, and Miss Johnson Collins. Let me tell you something. She came to Joan Collins? No, but she's prettier than Joan Collins. Oh. Y'all have seen Johnson Collins on Heart of the Home since she was nine years old. She is a beautiful, beautiful teenager now who is turning 14, 14. years oh, old. Boy. I can't believe it. Her so dad better get his gun ready. Johnson Collins, and she is gorgeous. Mm. We love coming into your home. Thank you so much for welcoming us. Now, tomorrow is Friday. It is racing day. Freaky Friday. It is racing day, and Dan Elliott is going to be with us tomorrow. And we showed you the Chase Elliott interview last week. When I stepped up and interviewed this kid, he was 13 years old. Tomorrow, Dan's going to talk about the opportunity that his nephew has been given Hendrick Motorsports. Do you know how much money is going to be behind this kid? So tomorrow, it will be racing day. Is that called pressure? I think there's a little pressure on this kid, but he is doing an awesome, awesome job. He is so far winning them all, and he has nerves of steel, kind of like me. If I can sit by him an hour and a half twice a week, I have got to have nerves you, of steel. You love it. I love it. I love you. You love it. Love you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am um, your favorite co-host. Please call your friends. No, you're not. Yes, I am. <laughs> You'll never be. I'm your Thank favorite co-host. Number, number one. one. <laughs> It'll never oh, happen. Yeah. You're out of here. We want you to call your friends and tell them tonight at 6 o'clock. Tune into the Encore edition and, and enjoy sharing once again Brother Matt's message. It is a message of hope. And today, in 2011, we are hoping for recovery. We are praying for recovery. We are praying for a revival in today's world. Right? You think it's going to happen? I ain't Be talking. positive. I'm not talking to you right Be now. Be positive. You hurt my feelings. He's positively number two co-host. There you go. <laughs> From North Georgia now, today, I'm Sherry. And I'm number one. He's number two. This is Bill Senior, Mary's boy. We will see you again only on ETC3. Now, don't touch that dial. Because my friend Rich Scott is full of good things to sell. He has got so many bargains going on. Contact him online or you can call him live at 5 o'clock today right here only on ETC3. Don't touch your dial. We will be back and you'll be here too tomorrow morning and every other morning, 8.30 to 10 a.m., 6 to 7.30 p.m., and 1 to 2.30 for you late-nighters who honestly do stay up and watch the reruns. We'll see you again only on ETC. You can't trust the weather, man. Six foot seven, and I got tired of her diapers and a double wine they couldn't pay for. One day they had a brainstorm. She pulled a gun, he cracked the set, they pulled it off, and they pulled away.